stripe has recorded uh, um, uh, information that identifies uh, your account number to us when it's transmitted through one of the terminals and permits us to match up uh, your account number with our account record and uh, complete the authorization transaction. But there's a lot more to it than that, or at least there can be. You see, inside that black area, there are actually three separate stripes, each carrying a different kind of information. The first one can classify you by risk, perhaps from your payment history. The second one carries your name, address, account number, and something called discretionary information, which can include your entire purchasing pattern, how much you spend, what you buy and where you buy it, and how often you use your card. Then there's the third stripe. Banking officials don't like to talk about that one because it's designed to be interactive, which means it can actually be updated with new information about you the very moment you use the card. So remember, every time you use one of your cards, you're helping to build a secret intelligence file about you. And how that information is used or potentially misused is a secret we may never know. Do you have a cold? Yeah. Here are two cold medicines. One relieves these three symptoms, this nine. Choose one. Nine. Why? That's me, all the way down the list. Muscle ache, congestion, general body ache, headache. You chose Dristan over Sudafed. I am shocked. But <laughs> would you try Dristan? Yes, I would. How do you feel now? Night and day difference, 100% better. Dristan relieves nine tough cold symptoms. I love Dristan, yeah. It's great. With the uncertainty of today's real estate market, many would-be home buyers have decided to do nothing at all. Coldwell Banker, on the other hand, thinks it's time to wake up to the possibilities. Home prices may never be this affordable again. Interest rates may never be this attractive. Altogether, it's a great time to buy a home. All it takes is opening your eyes to the opportunities and knowing who to call. Coldwell Banker, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Maytag, can I help you? No. Maytag, can I help you? At Maytag, our repairmen will make sure they're on top of their skills. Maytag's the name, repairs the game. Yeah. Just in case. After all, it has happened. Maytag headquarters. A Maytag does need a repair. Hello? Uh, no, dear, I won't be working late tonight. Maytag, the dependability people. Roseanne and Dan of Vegas Bound. The best odds in Las Vegas in our favor at the buffet table. Roseanne, then Hayden's left out in the cold. Remember to tell your father that I'm the one that did that. Hey! Coach! Tuesday. Wednesday, will the hunter finally bag the big game? This is not some woman that you can just mount in your den. John Ritter, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Richard Lewis. Anything but love, Wednesday. Uncovering secrets isn't easy because we usually don't know where to look. When you walk down the street, you look at it one way. But someone else, someone who knows a secret, can look at it in an entirely different way. And secrets come easily on the streets of New York. The sheer number of people who crowd its avenues assures that. But across the East River in Brooklyn, one of New York's best kept secrets isn't on the streets, it's under them. Bob Diamond is sort of a poor man's Indiana Jones. When he puts his construction barriers around an inconspicuous manhole cover on Atlantic Avenue, the thousands of other people who use this busy street have no idea that he's about to descend into a world of his own. Back in the winter of 1978, I was listening to the radio, and they mentioned in passing a legend of a tunnel under Atlantic Avenue, uh, but no one knew where it was or believed it was there. As an amateur archaeologist, Bob studied old maps and newspaper articles until he pinpointed what he believed to be the access point to the legendary tunnel. 
I had to crawl 70 feet on my stomach through a section underneath Court Street. I came upon a concrete bulkhead, and after poking around, I found that there was an opening molded into the concrete. The opening revealed a sealed section of tunnel from the 1840s. It was a half mile long, 17 feet high, and 21 feet wide, part of the world's first subway. All along the way, people told me there's no such place, it doesn't exist, it's only a rumor and a legend, it has armies of uh, man-eating rats inside and alligators. While cars and pedestrians clog the street up above, Bob usually has his tunnel entirely to himself. Right over here are some graffiti from 1844 that was chiseled directly into the stonework by some of the 800 Irish laborers who built this place in only seven months. Since the ventilation, it's ducks on Bob Sunday takes great today. pride in discovering the tunnel, but he thinks there's an even grander prize still to be unearthed. This newspaper article is what I used to discover the entrance to this tunnel, which no one else could find. All of the anecdotes mentioned in this newspaper article turned out to be 100% correct. And the last anecdote, which this newspaper article talks about, is the old wood-burning steam locomotive. Bob thinks there's another section of tunnel and a train just beyond his tunnel's far wall. But the way is blocked by a 10-foot thick wall of pipes and wires, the arteries of the city's utilities. So his only hope is to bypass it and drill in from the top. 150 feet right behind this wall, we should find that steam locomotive from the 1830s. And with help from America's best kept secrets, Bob gets a chance to drill two test holes on Atlantic Avenue, straight into the tunnel he believes holds his train. He thinks that because of a broken axle, construction workers sealed the locomotive up 130 years ago rather than trying to remove it. I've been up all night with my fingers crossed. Couldn't be more excited than I am right now. We're going to keep on drilling. Yes, we got to keep on drilling. Okay. Now they've gone down about four feet or so. There's another four feet left to go. My adrenaline's running full blast, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, it's brick. Yeah. Red brick. That's the roof of the tunnel. We got red brick starting to come up out of that boring hole. Right about where the diagram said the roof of the tunnel should be, and the roof of the tunnel is red brick. Here's a piece of it right here. Hey, where's the, where's the infrared cameras? A Department of the Interior Mine Safety Team lowers a special television camera into the test hole. If the tunnel has not been filled in, Bob will know within moments if he's found his locomotive. There's nothing there. It doesn't seem to be a cavity. All they see is the out-of-focus, undifferentiated wall of the test hole. Both holes did hit the new tunnel, but discovered it's been filled in with dirt. Brooklyn, it seems, isn't ready to give up its secret train. But then Bob Diamond isn't ready to give up his search either. I'm very encouraged by what we found today, because prior to today, all I had were some vague stories and antique newspaper articles claiming that the tunnel came this far. I'm not giving up. I have now gotten more inspiration to finish this excavation work. The popularity of video games in America is at an all-time high, and as stated earlier, the hottest game is Super Mario Brothers 3, so pay attention. Here are the secrets behind that game, including the big one, how to defeat King Koopa and win. Practice, practice, practice may get you to Carnegie Hall, but to beat Super Mario Brothers 3, you'll need more than that. Let's start with how you hold the controller. Always hold your finger on the B button when you're playing. When you do that, Mario runs wherever he goes. Instead of walking, he runs. If you need to jump or something, just push down on the heel of your thumb. But always keep the tip of your thumb on the A, and you'll really be a power player. Howard Phillips may be the best video game player in the world. In fact, at Nintendo, he's known as the Game Master. Now, for the first time on television, he's going to reveal Mario's ultimate secrets. Even if you don't play very often, this will still put you ahead of the game. Well, first thing that a uh, player wants to know is how to get farther into the game quickly, because that's one of the big rewards of a game. And in Mario Brothers, there's three hidden warp whistles that allow you to get farther into the game. The first one is found in level 1-3. And you can find it uh, if you go towards the end of the level. There's a white block 
uh, that you can stand on top of. And what you do is you duck down. You hold onto your hat and you duck down and hold there for about five seconds, the count of five. Mario will drop down behind the white block, and in fact, disappearing. Then you run to the end of the, the level as quickly as possible, and you go to a magic room where there's a warp whistle. Second one, you can get in the fortress on level one. If you go there and go about halfway through, you'll get to a dry bones, which is a turtle that's a skeleton. You, you squish him, and then you run back and forth, getting enough speed so that Mario can fly. You fly up to the ceiling of the, of the dungeon and over to the right, and you'll find a hidden door that shows you where the second warp whistle is. The third warp whistle is from world two on the overworld screen. If you get to the point where the upper right-hand corner has a rock on the screen, you have to use a hammer to break that rock, and you go into a new area of the screen that you couldn't see before. In this area, if you go and defeat the Hammer Brothers, whoa. You'll get the third warp whistle. I think the ultimate tip for Super Mario 3 is that there's a way that you can defeat King Koopa at the end of the game without him uh, breathing fire at you, and you be actually become invincible when you battle him. I really shouldn't tell you this, but the trick is you get the P-Wing from the princess, and you take that to the about halfway through the last level, and you'll find this area where there's a fall through the bottom of the screen, and you take the second corridor from the top, and you go to the right until you get to Koopa. Then you fly up to the top of the screen and walk over to the left and then back to the right again. And when you battle Koopa, he won't have any fire anymore. And also, he can only touch you once. And once he's done that, then he'll just jump up and down and eventually fall uh, through the bottom of the screen and you'll win the game. There are lots of secrets in almost every program, and programmers put them in there on purpose sometimes, by mistake other times, uh, but they're in there to make you have fun, and if you're really good, you can find almost every single one. More secrets still to come, so stick around. Missiles, weapons that illustrate the high-tech nature of modern warfare. But looks can be deceiving especially in battle. And in fact, one of the most important links in our national defense force comes with a decidedly low-tech look. It's tucked away near Omaha, Nebraska, an airborne fail-safe system with the code name Looking Glass. The name Looking Glass uh, denotes the fact that it can mirror the capabilities of our primary command post, which is underground. That command post is not survivable to a direct nuclear attack. And should that command post perish, uh, then the command of strategic forces would automatically evolve to the airborne command post and the general officer that would be on board. Simply put, this plane can take control of our nuclear forces should ground headquarters be hit. And for the first time, our cameras have been allowed on board. From rotary phones to seemingly antiquated control panels, it's easy to underestimate the power this plane could wield. But while it may not look state-of-the-art, it has one feature no other plane does. The keys to unlock our nuclear arsenal. All right, sir. Simultaneous rotation on my mark. All right, sir. Three, two, one, mark. The Looking Glass planes may not share the same space-age look or exotic names of our high-tech arsenal, but for more than two decades, they've been and continue to be a vital link in our national defense system. Baseball is a game full of secrets. The catcher is forever sending signs to the pitcher, the manager and coaches flash signs to the batter and base runners, and the other guys sit around and try to steal the signs. But one of the best-kept secrets in baseball is how a pitcher gets away with putting more than spin on the ball. When they throw curves, sliders, screwballs, breaking stuff, pitchers are using the laws of physics. But there are some pitches you can only throw by abusing the laws of baseball. Any way the pitcher can doctor the ball increases the effectiveness of the pitcher throwing a breaking pitch. If I spit on it, uh, I'll change the characteristics of the interaction of the surface with the air and enhance the curve in that way. To doctor a ball without being caught involves a great deal of stealth, but there are any number of places in or on a player's uniform where foreign substances can be stashed. The glove, the cap, the back pocket, underneath the belt. You can even use the uniform itself, a razor-sharp belt buckle, for example. 
these methods that alter the face of the ball might sound too obvious, but then how do you explain that the game's most celebrated doctor, Gaylord Perry, with his renowned ritual, got away with it for more than 20 years and wound up pitching himself into the Hall of Fame? The most famous instance of a pitcher getting caught red-handed was when umpires found an emery board in pitcher Joe Necro's possession. And as we go to the videotape, Joe Necro's little secret was revealed in front of millions and cost him thousands in fines. In baseball, a physicist can unravel some of the mystery of why a ball curves or jumps or darts. But putting that science into play effectively is still one of the sport's best kept secrets. Some secrets are meant to be kept, but let's be realistic. In most cases, it's a lot more fun sharing them with others. How tough is it to keep a secret? Ben Franklin said, three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Thanks for watching. Good night. Continental is pleased to have provided transportation. Whether you're taking off for a family vacation or a secret getaway, Continental for a great winter vacation. Hi, I'm Rick Dees. Stay up late tonight and see everybody's favorite TV dad, superstar Bill Cosby, and behind the scenes with Voices That Care. End of the night. Stay tuned for the ABC Monday Night Movie. Next.